Anfield has been a mecca for Liverpool fans since the club was established in 1892 and has seen everything from triumph and glory to heartache and tragedy. In this video, we're going to take a look back over the stadium's 138 year history and dive deep into the archives to get some perspective of the ground's evolution over the years. If you didn't know, Anfield was originally occupied by Everton and rows over the rent with landlord John Holden saw the club get forced to move across Stanley Park to Goodison. Holden went on to form Everton Athletic, but the FA wouldn't allow this name to be used due to its similarity to the original club, so in turn, Liverpool FC was born. This photo, taken by Liverpool Echo journalist Ernest Edward in 1906, is one of the first of the Spine Cop. The Cop got its name after a battleground from the Boer War, and if you'd like to go into more depth about that one and the cop specifically, Patrick Smith has already made a brilliant video explaining the cop's roots. I'll link that in the description. Spying Cop 1906 might ring a bell with some of you, as it's the name of Liverpool fan group who organise a lot of the banners and displays that you see contributing to make the stand so famous. 22 years later, in 1928, there was a roof added to the cop, and despite minor improvements, the stadium would stay pretty much the same up until almost 30 years later, in 1957, when the floodlights were installed. Six years later, the then Kemlin Road stand was modernised, increasing the capacity and adding seats to the stadium. With the cop at the far end of this photo, it's at this point that you can start to see the ground that we know and love taking shape. Later, Anfield's main stand was redeveloped, getting rid of the iconic Liverpool Football Club wording that lay on the roof above the dugout. If you look closely on the top of the wording, you'll see a pattern that might look familiar. If you're in your 20s or above, you'll definitely remember this Anfield, as this new pillared stand went up in 1973, and the photo you can see is from a game against Aston Villa. The Reds lost two goals to one, and scoring the Villa goals that day was none other than Andy Gray who went on to play for the team that Holden booted out of Anfield 85 years earlier. In 1981, legendary manager Bill Shankly passed away, and the following year the Shankly Gates were erected on the Anfield Road and Main Stand corner to commemorate everything that the man had done for the club. On the 15th of April 1989, 95 Liverpool fans were unlawfully killed whilst attending an FA Cup semi-final against Nottingham Forest at Hillsborough. This number would then rise, as Tony Bland and Andrew Devine became the 96th and 97th victim due to injuries sustained from the disaster, and the Hillsborough Memorial was put up next to the Shankly Gates on Anfield Road to remember the victims of the disaster. Here you can see fans of all clubs leaving flags, scarves, shirts and flowers to pay their respects. A few years later, in 1992, the Kemlin, which was named after the road that the stand backed onto, became the centenary as it marked 100 years since the club was formed, and to celebrate this, an upper tier was added onto the stand at Anfield. This is a photo of the Echo's Ian Hargreaves sitting on the concrete before the seats were installed. The Hillsborough Taylor Report had a huge impact on the safety standards for stadiums in the United Kingdom. Perimeter and lateral fencing was removed, and many top stadiums were converted to all-seater. This meant that Anfield was to forego serious change in the 1994 season, and the then all-standing spying cop was demolished and replaced with the cop that we know and love today. The cop's last stand was against Norwich in the April of 94, where the Reds were beaten 1-0, courtesy of a goal from Jeremy Goss. The passing of Bob Paisley in 1996 saw the installation of the Paisley Gates on the front of the cop. The gates feature the three European Cups that the great man delivered to the club during his reign as the manager. In 1997, an upper tier was added to the Anfield Road end, meaning that now every individual stand had undergone some kind of redevelopment. Throughout the 2000s, there was a continual saga about whether Liverpool would actually vacate Anfield to a more modern, bowl-like stadium. The idea was first banded around in the early 2000s, but was kick-started into more of a reality when the infamous ownership of American businessmen Tom Hicks and George Gillette promised that there would be a shovel in the ground within 60 days upon their arrival at the club. At the time, it was a common feeling amongst fans that in order for the Reds to compete at the top level, they would have to find a solution to improving the capacity of the stadium. 
as it was thought that it would be way too difficult to redevelop as opposed to building an entirely new stadium. Of course, there was never a shovel in the ground within 60 days, and despite Liverpool fans' protests, it's fair to say that it definitely turned out for the best. Upon the arrival of John W. Henry and Fenway Sports Group into the club in 2010, he was said to have preferred redevelopment over relocation, much as he had done with Fenway Park and the Boston Red Sox. Four years later, in 2014, the designs to redevelop the main stand were unveiled to see the stadium's capacity rise by a further 13,000. The main stumbling block for the redevelopment was that the people in the surrounding areas were unwilling to move, so it took time for the club to acquire the private land, and on the 10th of September 2016, the main stand opened fully for business and saw the Reds beat Leicester four goals to one. October 2017 saw the centenary stand get renamed to the Kenny Dalgley stand to show thanks and appreciation for everything that the King had done both off and on the pitch. And a year later was renamed again to the Sir Kenny Dalgley stand as the Scot rightfully received a long overdue knighthood. Other areas of the stadium worth noting is the memorial for the 39 Heysel victims that lost their lives in the 1985 European Cup final. The 97 Avenue, Paisley Square and the Bob Paisley and Emily Hughes statue that depicts a scene from 1968 when Paisley carried off future Reds captain Emily Hughes after he was injured. A fun fact about the cop is that from 1995 as part of Liverpool Football Club's new cop grandstand complex, Anfield Stadium's own McDonald's was believed to be Europe's first football ground burger bar. The restaurant closed in 2003 because it turned out that being open at most twice a week isn't exactly a great business model. Looking ahead to the future now and work is already underway for Liverpool's redevelopment of the Anfield Road stand and I'm going to leave you with a video of the current progress of the construction. I hope you've enjoyed watching this as much as I've enjoyed putting it together. Be sure to drop a like and subscribe if you want to see more content like this.